welcome to the class 7 uh, students today i'm going to start a new uh, chapter with you all which uh, is in your annual syllabus the chapter is classification of the living world uh, chapter number 3 in your book okay so this chapter is uh, about the living world the different types of organisms present in this living world and their classification okay so let's start reading from the book there are thousands of books in your school library imagine that there is no separate shelf for books on different subjects and anybody can put any book on any shelf they wish to now if you want a certain book where will you look for it you will find it difficult to sift sift means uh, to find uh, through okay to sift through the thousands of books in all the shelves however in your school library you will observe that the books are arranged systematically and placed under different groups such as science literature arts and so on so it becomes much easier for you to look at a book when the books are grouped or classified is uh, given in inverted comma see classified properly so with this example of uh, thousands of book uh, thousands of books in a library and uh, the need uh, for them to be classified under different groups of books uh, they are showing they are easily giving the example and showing how and why living organisms um, in this world they are not just in thousands they are in crores millions and billions sorry um, they if they are not classified under different groups uh, it will be very very difficult for uh, all of us and uh, especially for the scientists who work on these things uh, and who research with these things so classification of the living world is extremely necessary not only living world classifying uh, when there are lots of things of one type classifying them is extremely important okay similarly there are nearly 30 million types of living organisms on earth so uh, as i said uh, the number of living organisms is not just in thousands or crores those are in millions and not just one or two millions 30 millions okay similarly there are nearly 30 million types of living organisms on earth it would be impossible to locate and study each of them separately as individual organisms so based on certain common characteristics scientists have identified and placed them under separate groups at different levels this scientific way this definition is very important this scientific way uh, of identifying naming and grouping first uh, the organism has to be identified uh, then it will be given a name and then it will be put under certain category means grouped okay uh, so identifying naming and grouping of living organisms based on similarities and dissimilarities or differences so on what basis will this classification be done or this identification or uh, 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 grouping be done it will be based on the similarities and dissimilarities of that organism with other organisms so if one organism uh, has many similarities uh, with a few other organisms uh, who form a group that new organism will be placed under that group am i clear so this uh, scientific way of identifying naming and grouping of living organisms based on similarities and differences or dissimilarities also you can say is known as biological classification clear now what are the advantages of this classification why is classification done means uh, it is done uh, to make it easier uh, to make everything easier but uh, what are actually the advantages the classification of living organisms has many advantages number one it makes the study of living organisms systematic and simple uh, a lot of scientists and researchers are there who are studying these living organisms uh, <clears throat> day after day okay so it becomes easier for them it helps in identifying different organisms and placing them in groups 
So, different organisms can be easily identified with the help of their physical characteristics and they can be easily placed under any particular group. It helps to generalize the characteristics of a group so that we do not have to memorize the characteristics of each member of the group. So, suppose fishes, there are uh, thousands types, thousand type of fishes maybe or more than that. So, uh, do we uh, remember the characteristics of every fish that we know of or we just know or we just uh, keep in mind that fishes live in water, fishes have gills, uh, fishes have scales on their body, they have a tail uh, and so on. Okay. So, we do not uh, remember the characteristics of rohu fish separately, we do not remember the characteristics of uh, magur fish separately and other fishes so on. So, general uh, we have a ge general idea of what fishes are like and we remember those characteristics only. It highlights the relationship uh, between different organisms. So, uh, different organisms have evolved from common ancestors and uh, due to this classification we get to know how these organisms are related to each other, how much similar they are with each other and how much dissimilar they are and uh, why these dissimilarities have occurred. So, these uh, um, ideas can also be uh, achieved from the uh, means due to the biological classification. Last point is. Uh, it gives an idea about the evolution of organisms from simpler to more complex ones. Now, what is evolution? You will get the definition right beside uh, that paragraph in a box. Evolution is the way in uh, which living things change and develop over millions of years. Okay. So, uh, the gradual change uh, that take place over millions of years is known as uh, evolution. Clear? So, uh, you already got to know what the advantages of classification are. The next uh, topic that we are going to start is systems of classification, how this classification is done. Um, so, all those things we can uh, carry on in the next class. Uh, now, I want to uh, tell you whether uh, you have understood or not this topic you will have to learn this because in the online class I will be uh, continuing this chapter as well. So, you uh, continue along with these videos and tell me before the next online class whether you have understood or not. Okay. So, uh, thank you I will again uh, continue with the next topic of this chapter in the next online class. Thank you.